Okay. In a cross slope road, you can start the process from the center line, or you can start from one of the edges. Okay, it doesn't really matter. It's up to you. All right, so let's say that we are given a 6% longitudinal slope. do is we wanted to grade this road now, okay? So, a couple of ways we can do it. I'm going to start by finding what the elevations are at these two spot elevations on the side of the road, okay? So, what I know is that the horizontal run is 10 feet, correct? So I've got 10 feet of run, and I've got a 2% slope. So the rise is equal to 10 feet times 0 0.02, the slope, okay? So that equals the rise. So that means that That number is 52.6. Yes, Ashton? Where do you need this in from again? Like half of It's half of time. Now, how do I know that's 52.6 and not 52.2? Because the slope arrow is pointing down. That means this side of the road is higher than this side of the road. Good, good. All right, and so then this one is 52.2. All right, so what's the first contour that we're going to encounter on this road? 50, 52. Why is it 52? It's lower. Because we're going downhill. Slope is going that way, and I said this was a high point, didn't I? Yep, so it's 52. So pay attention to those little things because they are important clues on how you solve a problem like this, okay? So the first contour we're going to encounter is the 52 contour. <coughs> so elevationally, it is 0.6 feet below that spot elevation, correct? All right, so we know that the rise is 0.6 feet. We know that the slope is 6%. What we're trying to find is the run, right? Correct, okay. So the run formula is what? Rise over slope. So 0.6 divided by 0.06. That equals our run, which is 10 feet. Okay? So I take my scale and I measure 10 feet downhill and I put a little mark there. And that's 52. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to determine now where all the other contours strike that edge of the road, okay? So my rise is what? Point. Foot. Point six. One. It's one foot. I'm looking for whole contours now. 
right? So one foot of rise divided by the longitudinal slope tells me how far apart pole contours are as I go down the road, right? So that means that there is 16.6 feet of horizontal run in between each contour. So now I measure out 16.6 feet, 16.6 feet, and that's 51, and that's 50, okay? And these are 16.6 feet, and this dimension to describe a line, how many points do you need? At least two. Two, okay? So we only need to find one other point in order to determine where those contours are going to be. For, for me, the more accurate opportunity is the longer the distance are between the two points, right? If you're using a straight edge, it's not going to matter. I'll just tell you that. But in general, what I do is I try to do the longest distance. So the longest distance would be to find it from this side of the road, correct? Rather than the center line of the road. Okay? So we're going to go back and we're going to repeat this process here to determine where the 52 contour is on that side. So that is equal to 3.3 .3 feet. <coughs> so the 52 contour is right there. All right. So now I have two points on the same plane and I can connect the contours. I also know that every other contour is 16.6 .6 feet. So I just measure off 16.6 .6 feet, 16.6 .6 feet, and I mark the other two contours. And now I can use a straight edge to connect those lines. And those should all be exactly parallel to each other. If I had a curb and gutter added to this road, where would the contours go? Just straight, straight across, like that? Assuming the curb is higher, right? Yeah, the curb's higher. It would go at an opposite oh. angle, right? Wouldn't it be displaced and then going at the same angle? Would it be what? Displaced and then going at the same Edge, right on the face of the curve, 
So the contour cannot simply jump that vertical edge. So it can't cross the curve right there. Remember, definition of contours connecting all points of equal elevation on the surface, right? So this contour is seeking 51 everywhere. And so where is 51? It's in the face of the curve now. So this contour is going to turn directions and go along the face of this curve until it gets on top of the curve, just like the slab that we did, right? Where the contour hits the side of the slab, runs along the face of the slab, or the edge of the slab, and gets on top of the slab. This is exactly the same thing that happens, okay? So some of you are going to forget that and draw a contour line straight across the curve. Don't do it, okay? Okay, pay close attention. Contours run in the downhill direction as they strike the face of a curve. In the downhill direction. Contours run in the downhill direction when they strike the face of the curve. How far they run downhill is determined by what? Perfect. The height of the curve. That's correct. Good. Can you repeat that? Can you repeat that? Yeah. They run in the downhill direction for a distance that is determined by the height of the curve. Now, we make it fairly easy because the standard curve section looks something like that. It's got a radius on the top and it's got a radius down here. And that dimension is six inches. Most standard curves in the United States are six inches tall. Except that Rouge. Well, you'll find variations. There's, there's mountable curves and then there's Weird things like what we have here that are only two or three inches tall and they're, they're sloped to a concrete median. You will see some that are eight inches tall or higher. Okay. So if, if this is a standard curve, how far downhill does that contour run? Six inches? Halfway down the contour. Okay, it's half of that distance, so it's 8.3 feet. But remember, a six inch curve, the contour runs half the distance to the next contour. So halfway between these two is where that curve comes out of, where the contour comes out of the curve. Yes, actually, in, the, in that situation, these numbers would go away. Yeah, I can't do that because I'm right in the pen. So. And they would be moved. Anytime you have a vertical that interrupts the pattern of your contour, when it comes out, you have to label it again. How do you know that would be halfway? Do what? How do you know that it would be halfway? You have one foot contours. Okay. And it's a halfway. They're not connected to each other. 
except for the fact that they are connected along the face of the curve, down to there, down to there, and down. Okay, so what you what you actually have is a contour that does this. Okay? Now, we don't draw on your plan the contour in the face of the of the curve. Because the vertical line of the curve takes precedent over the imaginary line of the contour. Okay? The difference there is that when you're doing grading plans in a drawing software, AutoCAD, something like that, you actually do draw the line there because it has to be a continuous line. Okay? But when you're drawing it by hand, you do not draw that line there, that vertical line. Okay? It is understood because of the way that the contours are labeled that it does that. Okay? <coughs>
about a cross slope road and how to grade it. Buddy got it pretty good? Yeah. Does the 2% slope, I forget what it's called, uh, not factor into anything, the cross slope? The, the cross slope. It actually has factored in because it's what we use to determine these two elevations. Gotcha. Okay. So uh, if you didn't have if you didn't have spot elevations there, once you determine this location, then the cross slope would tell you how far that is going to be away from it. Okay? Now we're going to do a ground road, and for this one, we're going to have a six-inch crown. and an eight percent longitudinal slope. Is there going to be a curb on this road? Okay. There's going to be one later? Maybe. I just need to know if I need to leave room to add oh, it yeah, in. Oh, yeah, leave room. Okay. Determine the um, the edges. We could determine the edges. Yes. What else could we do? Yeah. How would you determine the edges? We we'll have to. We could figure out where all the contour lines cross the center line. Yeah. Okay. So we can do either of those two things, and both are correct. Okay. Doesn't matter which way you do that. Right. Okay. So if we're going to do <laughs> If we're going to find these two spot elevations, what are they? The same thing. They're going to be the same thing. Yes. Continue, Kelly. Three inches. They're going to be six inches lower. 48.1. Exactly. Very good. Six inches equals 0.5 feet, right? So we subtract 0.5 from that center line dimension, and now we know what the elevations are on the edge of the road. 